are now looking at genetic variation. So how can the genetic similarities and differences between and within species be compared? So we've looked at replication, we've looked at all of, uh, you know, transcription translation to know what's happening at a molecular level. Now we are zooming out and looking at, you know, how do they differ um, between species, what's happening over there. All right, so let's have a look. So let's firstly talk about um, the chromosomes. We've got these, these are autosomal chromosomes. There's 22 of them. And then we've got our uh, sex link chromosomes. So two of them over here. So remember, all together in our body, we've got 46 chromosomes. So, yeah, so 22, these bad boys, and then two little babies here. Those are basically, those are sex linked because they are determining the um the sex of the organism right so you've got x or y chromosomes and then these are autosomal ones remember you've got two copies over here so one from one from mum one from dad so all together they're going to be 46 chromosomes so 22 cop uh, so they're 22 in pairs but all together it's 46 including these over here these only here for x you'll have um if it's x chromosome you'll have two of these strands this here is a y chromosome so you can tell by that one big one and that small one. So that's X, that's why it says he. If there were two big ones, that would be X. So XX is female, XY is male. Um, yeah, so that's that without confusing you. So I'm just making sure we're going through these over here. Now, looking at the different traits, how are they expressed? So we've got um, dominant. So trait will always be expressed over other traits and recessive it requires two of the same allele to be inherited in order to be expressed so the way that these are interacting with each other is going to impact how you know what specific traits you have and that's basically your phenotypic expression so if, so for instance i've got black hair so that's going to be based on how these different chromosomes like not all of them are coding for hair of course but and I don't know which specific one it is, but let's say how number 12 is coding for that. And, you know, if both my parents have black hair, so I may have that. I may have a recessive allele. I don't, I've got black hair, parents have black hair. So that, that's what it is. So what I'm trying to say here is how these are interacting with each other. These chromosomes are going to impact the phenotypic expression, how you look. So trait will, so if it's a dominant trait now, it will be expressed over all other traits. So if in my genes, black hair is the dominant trait, I'm going to have it. It's going to be expressed over other traits. So I may have had a recessive, I don't know, light brown hair trait, but if black is dominant, that's how it's, it's going to be expressed over that light brown one. Then recessive, so it requires two of the same allele to be inherited in order to be expressed. So recessive alleles, um, this is when we now look at Punnett squares. And I saw one comment here. So so I've saw a couple of comments here in terms of, you know, if it's a bit confusing and you haven't done mod five right now, don't worry about it. I totally get it. Right. So what I just want you to focus on is maybe capturing some of this terminology. What's autosomal, what's sex link, you know, what's translation, what's um, transcription. Just think about the processes. Um, you know, it won't make sense immediately. Even when you start module five in class, it takes time to wrap your head around it. Definitely took me time, lots of questions to wrap my head around. Okay, where is this process occurring? How is it occurring? What is it? It's, it's confusing, right? So just think about the big processes that we've talked about today um, and maybe try to research them a bit and try to just understand them. Um, and hopefully when you want to study it in class, um, it would make a lot more sense. As I also said, I'm, it's a revision for module five, so I'm not going into a lot of detail. I'm kind of just going through the major concepts. Um, but if you've got any specific questions, please ask. So traits will always be expressed over other traits. That's dominant. And so the name itself will help you remember that it's a dominant trait that's going to be expressed over others. Recessive trait. So if both, let's say, um, both my grandparents had light brown hair right and then that trait it's not how did, okay it's not phenotypic like my parents have it in their dna but it's not expressed they've got black hair but then in the third generation which is me i might show it because it's in both of their um it's in both of their dna and then i might show it. it's recessive so it's when you've got two of those it may not be in every generation it may skip a generation 
something like that think for instance about red hair right so like um i've got a family friend they um both the, both of um my uncle and aunt they both have black hair but their daughter has red hair and it was you know their grandparents someone had red hair so it's not dominant it's not happening in every generation but the parents would have the recessive alleles for it and that's where it's popping up um in the offspring so i know again i know it's a lot i totally get it. it's just trying to think of the concept dominant it's the trait will always be expressed over others recessive you know you need two of the same so it um, so in order for it to be expressed, it needs to be there. Um, you know, your parents may not have it. For instance, that specific family friend that I was talking about, um, both the, the man and the woman, they didn't have red hair, but their ancestors had it, great grandparents and stuff. So then it showed up in the baby. So she has red hair. Okay. So co-dominant, both alleles in a gene, um, in a gene pair are fully expressed. So we've got both alleles here. So remember, alleles here. What, what are alleles? So let me go back in. Okay, so we've got both alleles over here that's, that, that, that are being expressed. So I've got allele for red, black hair and allele for black hair on both of these, um, on both of these, okay, uh, yeah, on both of these chromosomes, it's being expressed. All right, so an allele is basically um, that trait, you know, that's there in the, in the, um, in the genetic material, in the DNA over here. So I've got an allele for black hair and an allele for black hair over here, if that makes sense. All right, I've been logged out of Slido again, which means I can't see your incoming questions, but let's not worry about that for right now. I'm going to spend a lot of time on questions, so bear with me as I go through these. Think of these big ideas, jot them down, and then maybe do some of your own research. That can have a huge impact on your understanding. So incomplete dominance is when an allele is not completely expressed over its paired allele. So if I've got, let's say, let's say in flowers, if there is a pink flower, a red flower and a white flower, they are mating. So, you know, so we've got the, so they're mating. So we've got pollinization occurs and everything. So we've got a red flower and a white flower. Incomplete dominance is when, you know, let's say the red flower is, that the red allele is dominant over the white allele. But incomplete dominance would be when neither when the red allele doesn't win over the white, so you will end up with a pink flower. That's what it is. That's incomplete dominance, right? If they were co-dominant, red and white, I might see uh, I'll have a flower that's a mix of red and white, not pink, but you know you see red and white specifically. If dominant would be the red would win. I would have a red flower. Recessive would be you know the red will not win, even though it's dominant, it won't win. The white will win. It's recessive because the white is recessive. And so, and then multiple alleles is when an allele is not completely expressed over its paired alleles. So as you can see over here, um, if you've got a, bl uh, a brown and white rabbit, so you may see a variation of these, sorry, a variation of these colors. So that's what it is. Again, if you've got any questions, please pop them up. I know it's a lot. So just try and think of these big concepts and then do some of your own re research. Um, play the slide, um, play the recording again, you know, so that you are able to maybe slow me down and then go through it again. So now we look at pedigrees and Punnett squares. These are going, these are so helpful when you think about it. It's, there's a lot of concepts going on. It's quite mind boggling if you are not able to like, um, visualize this somehow so pedigrees that's about tracing phenotypes through generations remember phenotypes phenotypic traits are the traits that you can see so if you've got black hair that's your phenotypic expression if you've got brown eyes that's your phenotypic expression it's whatever you can see so they help us trace phenotypic expressions so if we look at back to that you know that hair color example again grandparents may not have may not have had may not have had red hair great grandparents may have so then i see it as a recessive allele that pops up in the great grandchild so helps us trace phenotypes through different generations it all okay you always need to include a key and if you see a pedigree like you know one that's given a the exam for example it will include a key it will tell you but it's just certain like the circle represents female square represents male the affected the affected trait um sorry the person affected with the trait will be colored the dis uh, diseased there's that cross there um twins you'll see them this way adopted and then miscarriage so 
this is the generation number. So the first generation may be, for instance, parents. The second generation is children. Um, that's the line of the descendant, and that's a sibling line. In twins, it would be like that. So recessive traits skip generations. Dominant cannot. So like we spoke about earlier, recessive traits will skip generation. In the hair color example, you know, great grandparents had red color, red colored hair. Par uh, grandparents didn't. Parents didn't. But the child might have it. It's a recessive allele that has skipped two generations. That's what it is. If it was a dominant thing, if red hair color was a dominant allele in their DNA, then it would pop up in every single generation. It will not skip generations. Sex link traits affect one sex or more, right? So, it's, so it may affect both the daughter and the son. The best thing with these is to practice these questions a lot. You will find a range of these questions, um, obviously, in the biology papers. Um, you'll find them online. You can find them in the biology sample paper that's published by Nessa. So doing them will make you feel more comfortable with them. Now, Punnett squares. They allow us to theorize how many genes pass from parents to offsprings. So... I've got an allele, right? So I've got, let's say, BB. Big B means it's dominant. Small B means it's recessive. So if I've got BB, this is, in, uh, so we can see here, this is homozygous. Uh, no, this is heterozygous. So you see BB, it's two different. It, was hom it would be homozygous if it was two capital Bs or two small Bs. Um, but if it's big B and a small B, that's heterozygous. It's two different. So we've got pollen here from one flower. And pistol he so that pollen has this trait BB and the pistol also has the same trait so these two can interact with one another, with one another and will end up with um, a homozygous a homozygous dominant trait over here so big B small B we end up with a heterozygous trait B, and over here what's going to be expressed think about it for a second out of these two which one is going to be expressed it's of course going to the going to be the big b that's going to be the trait so if big b is purple colored yep so it's purple so that's what the trait is going to be the flower is going to have purple petals here the flower is going to be is going to have purple petals because it's two capital b's here the capital b wins over the small b so it's going to have purple same thing over here i've got a capital b and a small b we are talking about purple color purple petals so it's going to be big b and small b purple is going to win as a phenotypic expression finally i've got two sm um small b's so that is going to be um the recessive allele the re so it's going to be homozygous so it's going to be homozygous but it's not the dominant one so that means we've got a white flower here this one wins because it's two small b's they're the same so I know it's a lot, but I'm just quickly going to go through one more time because I totally get it. Um, we've got two capital Bs over here. All right, so that's going to result in homozygous dominant. So it's going to have purple flowers. Over here, I've got the big B and the small B. Big B encodes for purple color. Small B encodes for white color. Big B over here is going to, is going to win. So we're going to end up with purple colored petal. Same thing happens over here. And then in small BB, we see the white color. So we see white color because that wins. It's, um, it's homozygous. Okay, so key. You want to have a key here that actually tells what's happening, right? You'll be asked to make um, uh, Punnett squares. You know, you, you, might, you may be asked. I won't say like, you know, you will be asked, but you may be asked to make them in the exam. So you need to have a key. There, need to be, there needs to be parental phenotypes and genotypes. And this was the parental phenotype. This is what was expressed in the parents. All right. They are homo So they are heterozygous over here. And then over here, we see the genotype. But, you know, if the thing represents whatever. Okay. So remember, the genotype is what you encode for. But the phenotype is what is expressed. So that's the difference between the two. Then we've got offspring genotypes plus phenotypes. You need to be able to show that as a percentage. So you know, seventy-five percent, it's going seventy-five percent, it's going to be homozygous over here. Um, but twenty-five percent, it's so homozygous dominant. Twenty-five percent, it's going to be homozygous recessive. Then percentages and ratios too. So over here, we see the ratio of one to one to one. So one homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, and then one homozygous recessive. 